All right, let's start talking supply side principles. The hardware world acts, acts as a major supplier to the software industry. So obviously the things that are happening at the hardware level strongly affect what happens at the software level. And we all know this law. So everybody knows Moore's law, but that doesn't mean everybody knows how to use Moore's law. Moore's law basically says processing power doubles every 18 months. Closely related to Moore's law is a second law called Crider's law. Crider's law is basically saying the same thing for storage capacity, okay? And if you put both of these together, you don't have to worry about the specific numbers, okay? Just the round number story is that technology basically gets 10 times better, faster, cheaper, more powerful every five or six years. And, you know, or you could say it's 100 times better every 10 or 12 years. What matters to the strategist is the concept of what this means, not the mathematics. I mean, the fact that it's actually 5.6 years, you know, to get 10x better in with Moore's law doesn't really matter. What matters is that you have a time frame over which you can safely predict certain things. An order of magnitude change is huge. The two orders of magnitude is incredible. How do we actually then use this stuff? Because that's that's what this is about. Well, that already tells you that things are moving fast enough that the smart guys don't design for today. They, like Wayne Gretzky, the hockey player, they skate to where the puck is going to be, not where it has been. So the state of the art today, the market today, obviously that's important. But if you are playing for the long term, you should actually be moving where the market is going, not, not where it is now, which, it, which is where it is about to leave. We're going to get a bit more specific with this. If you look at, um, say, Microsoft's strategy for, for decades, um, they've been playing the same game for decades, actually. One of the inferences from Moore and Krieger's laws is that if performance is going to increase so much at my supplier level, that's at the hardware level, then really as a software developer, I can just focus on adding features and not really on performance optimization. And that actually means I can probably get away with some bloatware. And that is exactly what Microsoft has done. I mean, they understood right from you know the early 80s that you can... As long as you have what is popular today, then the power will come tomorrow from the hardware. It's even interesting how they how they how they quoted that in this or what they wrote in this advert for Windows 1.0. Popular applications today, powerful applications tomorrow. Really interesting when you, when you think about it from a strategic perspective. I mean, Windows One was total crap compared to to the Mac, which was the alternative, but. Bill Gates was thinking about the things that didn't change. He was looking forward. He already realized that the power of hardware and other technology advances was going to make GUIs um, the only game in town. So while he was making lots of money out of DOS, he was already skating to where um, the industry was going, which was GUIs. And I think at a broader level, Microsoft has always understood that um, they can get away with a crappy first version of, of a piece of software as long as it has enough features to be popular um, and then the power kind of comes later. Apple is another company that has played the uh, Moore and Crider playbook time and time and time again. The iPod is, is an example of that. Okay, so Toshiba who were a hard disk manufacturer, so Crider's Law, were getting to the point where they could store five gigabytes, you know, on a tiny hard drive. But even Toshiba itself didn't even know what they were going to do with that. They, they had no idea what anybody would do with a tiny five gig hard drive. But chance favors the prepared mind. Steve Jobs and co were already thinking about how they would fix the whole crappy MP3 experience where you had to sit at your house, decide you know, the few songs you could fit onto the MP3, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so they had figured out that a key thing 
to really make their proposed mp3 player the game changer would be that you actually wouldn't even need to think about what to put because you could put everything you have and so they had a use for a tiny 5g hard drive um and of course, the important thing was that their, their mindset was such that they knew that such a thing would happen and they were ready for it. Another example of, you know, them playing from the same playbook was the next big product, which was the iPhone. So if you compare the iPhone, the first version of the iPhone with the reigning devices at the time, like the BlackBerry, it was so much more powerful. I mean, it, it had you know, like two processors where, where, where and, and even the BlackBerry guys were alarmed when they, when they, when they saw the phone, but you see, he was still, but that's still playing Moore's law because Steve Jobs was ready to introduce something that was very cutting edge and very expensive, knowing that Moore's law would first, would do two things. It would drive the functionality he was introducing at a high price point to a lower price point, which he would be able to compete at in the second-hand market because he was going to create a product that was relatively high quality and would have a, high, a long shelf life. And Moore's Law would also ensure that his high-end products would continue to be high-end because he'd keep finding more things to do with that. It's very important, I mean, for the hardware guys, we're, we're, we're talking software, but as an aside, it's important for hardware guys to pay attention to the dynamics of the second-hand markets, which Apple has actually been a bit more clever about than a lot of people. So another perspective to cry down more is really not just at the low end. It, takes the low, it makes the low end much better over time, but it also makes the high end um, A, more accessible, and B, um continuously high end okay if you play the game right 